Good evening to everyone. Uh, friends, all of we know that human beings have always been working and living as communes. And uh, it has always been there. We have lived together, we have fought together, we have come together, we have always been together. And that's something which is part and parcel of human natures. And working to create something has always been something uh, that uh, has existed. Now that raises a big question that co-working, is it working or not working? Is it something like uh, the new next fad or is it really something which is happening? Or is it something that is like a packaging of an old idea? Well, let's look at it. So I'm showing you a short video of a co-working space. Uh, which essentially, as you know, is unlike the traditional working spaces. This is open all the 24 hours, all through the year. There's no like particular time that you go in and go out. Uh, you work long hours if you desire to. Sometimes you work short hours based on your co commitments and your deliverables. You meet interesting people, you drink coffee, you have lounges, you have Skype rooms, conferences as well as places where you can be isolated, as well as places where you can communicate with others, interact and come out with something which is positive or a product at the end of the day. Now, when you talk about co-working spaces, there's always this notion that co-working spaces are places where you have fun, where you kind of hang around, you may even find your boyfriend or girlfriend. But that may not be true when you really look at the, the seriousness in which this co-working spaces work. You go there and you pay for that space. So obviously that's an obligation that you need to keep. But also it lends an idea that this co-working spaces are for people who are in the class of society, what we call the entitled people. Now, having said all these things, you know that co-working spaces are mushrooming all around the world. Now, about 10 years, 12 years back, Christopher and I uh, kind of decided that we're going to create our own co-working space which we call it the India House. It goes a step beyond and uh, this is the promenade where you walk in uh, you walk in through this Mahadwara or the portal and you enter into a kind of a, a void or a courtyard. Flanked down both sides is uh, two buildings connected by a courtyard. The building on this side is the house and on the other side is the office. Now this is something which we call it India House. We created a space where we can live, we can work, we can celebrate all in one go. Having said that, I'm going to take you to the office part where you will see paintings which are very large. Sorry about the bad video which I did it in a quick mode. And uh, this lobby leads you into a, a kind of a gallery. And this gallery uh, um, is full of paintings and this gallery leads you to a large space which is in the basement when this basement is not being used as a space to display paintings it hosts a host of projects that we have finished so it's full of models it's a large nice place where a lot of important shows have been carried out over here then I'm going to take you into a classroom or a seminar hall it's a place where people who have certain skills and knowledge they come and share and we teach those people who are seeking for learning from us. This is my cabin. This is our typical office floor. Nothing different, very simple, mundane office. Uh, everybody has their place, tables and chairs, nothing, nothing kind of exclusive in the sense. Uh, but it is also mentored by uh, a person called Christopher who's sitting over here. So this is the house part, uh, very uh, simple. And we live with uh, uh, paintings and artifacts that we have collected. They remind us of the times that we have uh, uh, accumulated those or we they lend us the memories that where we have brought them from. So it's normal house, office, courtyard and a gallery all in one place which allows us to kind of escape the urban sprawl, escape the chaos that one experiences in uh, the day-to-day -day life in Indian cities. Now that's about India House, what I call it, not just co-working, but also co-living and co-creating a lot of other things. Now when I look at a photograph like this, that's harvesting. Traditionally, if you look at it, villages always used to co-work together. 
when they are not harvesting, they would go back and become cobblers, they would go back and become ironsmiths, they would go back and become like, you know, herdsmen or anything else. So they all come together and co-work to do the harvesting and sowing. So is that something new? No, it's been there traditionally. If you look at agrarian societies, now when you look at like spaces like factories, it's also a co-working space. Can you deny it that people are not working together there? There are technicians, there are foundry men, there are like labor, there are people who are managing these spaces, there are people who are like, you know, uh, creating and like uh, uh, products in these factories. Now, when you look at like spaces like a classroom, obviously it is also, according to me, a co-working space. There's somebody who has a knowledge, there are some people who are coming there to seek that knowledge. They are com they're completing the circle together by sharing and caring and giving knowledge what, what is what creates human society's increment. Now, when we look at like spaces like work, uh, construction work site, there are people who are labor, skilled, unskilled, there are architects, engineers, there are like contractors, vendors, everybody puts together, pool in resources, they put their time together, work together, they are co-working too. So, now coming to the Indian army, or any army for that matter, it looks like one, it, they work as one unison, they work as in one kind of a, a discipline, but they're also co-working. If there is a certain task to be carried out, there are experts, there are skilled, skilled people. So, can you really say that co-working is limited to what co-working is that we have all come together to discuss today? No, I think co-working existed for a very long time. If you really look at co-working started by WeWorks essentially, I think about 10 years back in New York between three friends or three people who came together, an architect, a baby store manager and an is a retired Israeli army person who came together, found this, you know, like a city full of like, you know, empty spaces. I remember Newark, Newark, New Jersey used to have like buildings which would be on sale for one dollar. I'm talking about, I'm not joking. I'm talking about a building that I remember in Newark which was on sale for one dollar, but it had so many litigations, so many payments to be made. So this particular city has many, many empty spaces. So I, an idea came, a simple idea, co-working. Why don't we kind of refurbish and then we kind of reuse them? So this idea is so simple, just like Airbnb as well as, um, or let's say Uber, that it could be copied anywhere and it is happening as we talk. So these three people had to kind of, you know, like jack it up, scale it up to a level faster so that they can have a, a bigger hold on the market or a bigger market share. But what was very interesting as against uh, any other opinions, somehow this co-working space, which started with a $1 million kind of uh, investment today is like, you know, valued at $20 billion. That's amazing for a company uh, uh, to make in a short span of 10 years. So that's what I credit. And what, what, what is very interesting is that they could actually re kind of, you know, appropriate the buildings which were built in the boom time and probably are no longer of a certain use that they were built for. So anyway, there is an initial investment or a capital intensive investment for these co-working spaces, which is something which one has to understand. Also, when we look at like co-working spaces, people are paying there to go. And I'm told like, you know, in uh, places like America, you have to pay about like closer to $500 a month for membership, wherein in UK, you have to pay about 600 pounds or Europe $500. But what is surprising is that when I did a little Google search, Chiang Mai in Thailand happens to be like the booming center for co-working spaces. Now, I would wonder, I have been to Chiang Mai in 1995, there's nothing, it's just a tourist place. So perhaps people go on vacations and they get time to work there or they want to be there vacating and working together. So, you know, like in India, if you really look at like the high side of a co-working space, you would have to spend about 10,000 rupees. Now, when we look at co-working spaces, it's an investment. It's not like 10,000 or 5,000 that you're investing. You're investing in your own self, in upgrading your 
uh, professional um, caliber. You're also investing in progressing your career. You're investing in meeting people who probably would help you in kind of, you know, the work that you're, uh, uh, you're doing. Now, having said that, there are negative points. Does co-working solve the idea of commuting? Probably not, unless you select a place which is co-working space very close to your home. Another negative factor one thinks about when it comes to co-working space is that you kind of always carry a big load of your uh, bag with your laptop, with everything. There's no space that you can store. Remember, it's a working space which is ephemeral, short-lived. You, you create it and the next morning it's over. You, you, you carry it back. In a way, it's efficient in the sense like you're not occupying it forever. You're leaving it for somebody else to kind of occupy your table. Now, when we look at co-working spaces, one of the things which I recently visited some co-working spaces in Bangalore, the tables are so small. It's almost like they are designed to only have a laptop. Now, that's something that limits many, many professions from working from. Like, if you're an architect, you can't spread a drawing. If you're doing a certain amount of research, it's very difficult to have your resource materials, your research kind of books to spread around and work around. But then there is a certain kind of efficiencies when these spaces are built. You don't have a lot of wastage of space. About 10% uh, of your space is left for uh, what you call the shared spaces in the form of lounges, in the form of Skype rooms, in the form of um, conference rooms, in the form of, uh, you know, like uh, uh, receptions and cafes and all that. But the rest is all like extremely efficiently used. Now, having said that, the point that I want to drive is like, are these co-working spaces kind of going to survive? That's a big question. Now, that's a question we do not know because they do not really address a whole array of jobs that are in place. Majorly, they kind of address jobs which are highly, highly dependent on digital technology or on technology that is that can be run through laptops. And also one of the points that I have categorically noticed in all these co-working spaces is that there is no mentor. Most of these co-working spaces are occupied by people who are roughly between 22 and 30 or, in my opinion, they don't have the experiences to run large set of businesses. So imagine a co-working space which comes with a mentor who's at least like twice their age group. That would be the formula for the next generation of co-working spaces to whom they can go and they can discuss. Discussing between like people of the same age group, there are limitations, we all know that, you know. So friends, when we look at urbanization in, city, in countries like India or anywhere else, even in America, they talk about 40% of the people who are in the workforce will be like independent contractors. They will be working as entrepreneurs. They will be working as single offices. They will be working as um, uh, as uh, isolated kind of people. There will not be any corporate address for them. So they will always like plug in and plug out. Now, when you look at the way the urbanization is happening in the next 10 years, it's going to be a, like a kind of an explosion of urbanization in a country like India. Now, what happens when urbanization happens? There is movement, there is migration, that's inevitable. People move from small villages to large villages, people move from large villages to towns, towns, pe people in the towns move to large cities, people in pe uh, places like Pune move to Mumbai, megalopolis, and there are reverse migrations also. But movement is inevitable whenever there is a large-scale urbanization happening. And in, Indi in a country like India, it's something which we are experiencing. Now, why do people move into cities? Friends, in my conclusion, I, was, I would like to kind of categorically note cities are the places where we will kind of live our aspirations. We come as doctors, we come as people, we become doctors, engineers, architects, laborers, bus drivers, taxi men, you name anything. But cities allow us to be who we are or what we want to be. They kind of feed into our aspirations. 
Now, when we want, we, when everybody wants to move into cities to live their aspirations, there has to be a particular platform where you can dignify your work, where you can dignify your role. And those platforms happens to be these co-working spaces. On a positive note, I would like to conclude saying that these co-working space lends that in between very temporary or maybe a short time platform for dignifying the people who want to work and who want to be noticed for their kind of you know skills. And these kind of ideas are always going to come up it's sustainable or not sustainable that probably we'll have to wait in the future to see. Thank you very much.